So God's going to show up no matter what, right? Or is he? Is God going to show up today? Is he going to teach you something? Or is life going to teach you? So if life teaches you, um, how, how do we know it's not God? I'm trying to situate this. How do we know that it's not God? So if life is showing up and life is going to teach you, uh, isn't God life? Probably. Um, it's interesting to me about uh, life and respect and and just uh, just our time here and what we do with it. You know, my biggest trophy is being able to say I'm sorry to somebody. Does that person hold you to it and expect you to do everything that they expect you to do after you say you're sorry? Do they acknowledge the fact that at least it surfaced? <laughs> you can't deal with something that's buried. But if something surfaces, come on now. If it surfaces and it's coming out, I'm walking around here. If it surfaces and it's coming up and it's coming out, uh, are we going to deal with it? Or are we going to say, you know, I'm going to, I'm not going to deal with it. I'm going to, I'm going to go with the, the saying or feeling, you know, nobody's perfect. Or I'm going to go with the saying and feeling, you know, you're toxic. Or I'm going to go with the feeling <clears throat> and saying, <coughs> I can't find something in myself. You don't even have to ever talk to a person again. But if you're hearing somebody, could people, I'm going to jump to this right now because thank you, Lord. This respect thing, could people respect money more than you? Of course they can. And that's why we go back to scriptures that God didn't mess up on. We're not supposed to love money more than man. We're not supposed to, you know, kind of do that, you know. <coughs> they say money's the root of all evil. But, you know, we also know that money doesn't have, you know, a pulse or a heartbeat. And that people can really become protective of it. They have money and they're powerful that way. Or Anyway, <coughs> I guess what I'm saying is um, it could go all around about respect. It can go all around about what you respect and what you love. You know? So if we come to the conclusion when something surfaces, we can either deal with it because it's going to keep coming back up. Guaranteed. In my life, it, had, it kept reoccurring. And I was like, why is the same thing coming up? Why am I apologizing for doing something I can't seem to stop controlling? Thank God it wasn't like, you know, terrible things where I'd have a life sentence or anything, you know. But these are moral things and hurtful things that happen in families. But, you know, you're you're accountable for, for what you're doing and what you've done, you know. That's where that respect comes in. But if you can't respect people, I mean, if, I, I mean I've seen people want so much respect that don't even own it or have done anything for it. Or to get it. It's like, is respect earned? Sometimes it's not, you guys. Sometimes it's like George Floyd laying there. You know? Most of the world would say, hey, you know, that's unforgivable what he did. Or this or that or that or that. I'm using him because it's all over the media. But I can go back to Jesus really hanging on a cross. Whether you want to believe him or not. But just let's go personally without the religion. Or anybody that's a you know believes in Christ, and I'm not going to go by an atheist standpoint. I'm going to go by a human standpoint. It's about you know just uh, doing the right thing. You know, it's that balance. It's so hard to find balance in everything. I've made so many mistakes with my tongue. They said that the smallest muscle on your body is your tongue. It does the most damage. I can account for that. But when that surfaces, that's what we're talking about. Things that rise up. Things that the class of life is teaching you over and over and over again. It's school time. It's God time for me. It's learning something again. Was I too prideful? Did I not accept something that I could have that would have taught me?
something, whether it's material, whether it's a word of advice, whether it's you having so much pride, you're going to do it your way. You're not going to hear what anybody says. And you know what the worst thing is? To try to talk to somebody and level with them and love them. And they just assume you walk out the door and talk when you leave. Deal with it with me. If you have an issue with me, deal with it with me. Because that's how it's going to probably, you know, be able to be solved. Just like my children, especially my sons, when they have those dirty, wet, disgusting shoelaces that wouldn't untie. Did I sit there and take them out? You know what I did? I walked up and I opened up the drawer. I said, here's a fork. Stick that end in there and pull and tug on it and grab it. And they'd undo it. Of course, then I washed them, you know, or do what you gotta do. But you have to teach children when they're little, you know, because sometimes people aren't really teaching their children about color, anger, uh, different things. <clears throat> You know, everybody has anger. You know, everybody has their days where uh, nobody will understand them or nobody wants to take the time with them or everybody's just too busy. You know, every time I thought I was gonna teach somebody else, I learned something. You know why I learned something? Because there's moments in life where we must learn. We must stop. We must take that glass. And in that glass, there's the golf balls, there's the pebbles and there's the sand. In that glass, who's important to you? Is it the golf balls? Is it the pebbles? Is it the sand? Yeah, so, you know, and at the same time, you gotta look back and think, okay, now why did I do that? Did I do that for that? People that guilt are the worst to me, okay? I've dealt with some heavy guilters in my life. But I, I like to be able to stand up and say I'm free from guilt. I unpacked today. I unpacked my guilt. If you want to be around me and want to love me, stop guilting me. Okay? It's a form of manipulation to see things your, their way to make you feel bad. Because if you can break somebody down and, and make them feel like their, their self-worth isn't, you know up to years or whatever tactic you want to use. You know, I didn't go to college and I am a ninth grader and I got on the train a little late. But today I don't want guilt. I don't want shame because you don't like me or you don't like the way I've done things because the Lord's provided plenty for me. And I'm thankful for what I have. And I have a thankful heart. If people say otherwise, let him be your judge or that moment when you know yourself. And it's Miss Cool talking about, don't guilt me or shame me. Because guess what? I stand up. And if people shut you down and say, oh, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Maybe they need some growing. Maybe it'd be a good idea if they did hear it. Maybe it's not toxic. Maybe they could learn something. It's not always gossip. It's an observation. It's someone standing there at the light when it's green and not going. When it's red and there's an accident. And somebody warned you that loved you that was older that said, step aside. You can count on me. Use me as your mistake and path. That's what I tell people. You know why? Because I want to learn something. Let me learn something today, Lord. And I'll be a better person. It's Miss Cool saying... Hey, uh, think about some of the things I say, will you? God bless. Bye now.